Okay, we come to the next type of bonding called as covalent or molecular bonding. Let us come to the same example where there are two people A and B. They want to buy a burger which costs them 200 rupees. A has 100 rupees, B has 100 rupees. When we talked about electrovalent bonding, we said that A gives his 100 rupees to B so that B is capable of buying that burger. The other possibility is where A and B pool in their money. That means neither is A giving to B nor is B giving to A. Instead, they put their money together and when they put their money together, they come together, they have in all 200 rupees and they go and buy the burger and they share it equally between them. This is a similar scenario when we see when there are two atoms, none of them is ready to part with their valence electrons because <coughs> they cannot give away more than three electrons and they cannot take more than three electrons because that will make them highly unstable. So if you have a scenario where there are two non-metal atoms, that is having four, five, six or seven electrons in their outermost or valence shell, in such a case they will come together to have eight electrons in their outermost shell. Because they are sharing there is no transfer of electrons. So there is no deficiency or excess of electrons in any of the atoms. Hence, there are no ions formed over here, only molecules. Typical examples we see are carbon dioxide, methane, carbon tetrachloride, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and many more. Most of your organ, all your organic compounds have covalent or molecular bondings. Hence, this type of bonding is very uh, important to understand as well. I have taken two simple examples over here. The first one is of nitrogen where we consider the case how nitrogen as a molecule is formed by its atoms. Nitrogen molecule means there's nitrogen atom involved having an atomic number of 7, electronic configuration is 2 and 5. That means the number of electrons, valence electrons is 5 over here. So how many more electrons do you think this needs in order to complete its octet. So 5 plus 3 makes it 8. In other words, each of the nitrogen atoms needs 3 more electrons in order to have 8 electrons in the valence shell. We again draw what we call as Lewis structure or dot diagrams. Here we have represented electrons by different symbols. It does not mean that the electrons are different in each of the two atoms. It is simply a symbolic way of representing the nitrogen atoms so that there is more clarity in the diagram. Actually, there is no difference in the electrons of the two atoms. You need to remember that. You could have put crosses over here. It doesn't make any difference. It's just to avoid confusion. That is why I prefer to put different signs in order to represent electrons of two different atoms. So nitrogen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, short of 3 electrons. Nitrogen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each one of them needs 3 electrons in order to complete its octave. So they both come together, bring in their 3 electrons, 3 electrons. Now if you notice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember, while drawing the circle, you have to include these six, that is the shared pair of electrons, three pairs are shared pairs, and the two unshared pair. Similarly, for this nitrogen also, we will draw a circle and we will include the shared pair of electrons. So this circle I had not drawn earlier so that there is more clarity. Please remember you are not to include all the electrons. For the first nitrogen, we include only the shared pair of electrons and its lone pair. Same way for the second one. This is the dot diagram or the Lewis structure. Now since there are three pairs of electrons being shared between the two atoms of nitrogen, hence it is an example of triple covalent bond 
and it is represented by three dashes between the nitrogen atoms. If you recall, this very much looks like the Venn diagram that you do in mathematics. In order to make the concept clearer, we are taking a hetero molecule as well. That means a molecule which is made up of different types of atoms. This is, was a homonuclear molecule. We have another case of carbon dioxide. Carbon atomic number 6, electronic configuration 2 and 4, oxygen 2 and 6. If you notice, 4 electrons in the valence shell. In other words, this carbon needs 4 more electrons in order to have 8 electrons in the valence shell. And oxygen, on the other hand, only needs 2. So, what does carbon do about the remaining 2 electrons? Here, a simple solution is found. Oxygen goes and calls one more of its friend. In other words, with one carbon, we have two oxygen atoms combining. So this is represented by a number put before the atom of oxygen. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In other words, in total, the oxygen atom will require four electrons. And individually, each oxygen atom needs two only. So, we put carbon in the middle. Now, carbon takes up two electrons from the first oxygen atom, two electrons it shares with the second oxygen atom. Four it had of its own. In other words, carbon now effectively has eight electrons in its valence shell. This is its boundary. On the other hand, oxygen had six of its own and it is sharing only two two with the carbon atom. Mind you, it is both the oxygen atoms combined which are sharing four with carbon, but each oxygen atom in turn is using up only two. Similarly, for the second oxygen atom, we'll draw a circle over here. Now, if you notice over here, there is two pair of electrons involved over here, two pair of electrons involved over here. So oxygen, double bond with carbon, and carbon doubly bonded with oxygen gives us the structure of carbon dioxide. Since there is double covalent bond, we will represent it by double dashes between each of the respective atoms. If you notice over here, there is no transfer of electrons. There is no loss. There is no gain. That is why we have written that there are no ions over here in this type of bonding. There are only molecules. Now, since these are stable molecules and no ions involved, the forces of attraction between them will be relatively weaker. So, when I talk about two nitrogen molecules, each one of them is a separate entity. Hence, the force of attraction between them will be low. A low force of attraction means... Such type of substances will prefer to exist in liquid or gaseous state because that is where the force of attraction between the particles is relatively less compared to the solids. If it's a liquid or a gas, we know that the boiling point will also be low. Boiling point or in case we have the substance in the form of a solid, its melting point will also be very low. Same way when we talk about its solubility, because they are non-polar, they don't have, in this case we are not talking about polarity, so since they are simple molecules, their solubility in polar covalent solvents like water will be negligible or less. But there can be different type of interactions about which we will talk later, because of which they can dissolve, like carbon dioxide dissolves in water to a small extent. The reason for this we shall discuss a little later in the next video. And these cannot be solidified easily because they will be in the form of liquids or gases. We will need high pressure in order to solidify them. Now, after knowing the atomic numbers or after determining the atomic numbers, you can easily draw the structures of the various atoms. I will advise you to attempt the structures which have been mentioned in the worksheet which accompanies this video 
so as to get a stronger grasp of the topic of ionic or covalent bonding. The covalent bonding discussed over here is more for the high school students. Discussing the concept of covalent bonding or extending it to the concept of hybridization and uh, sigma ion pi bonding will be done in the next video. I would advise that you practice these structures first in order to get a stronger grasp of this particular topic. Hope you understand it.